well, let's look at this next graph here. So the first thing you want to realize is the tick marks are a little bit off here because this should really be just based on the graph plus and minus two. That's going to be where we have our vertical asymptotes. So where's it concave up? Well, over here it's concave up. I know it doesn't curve up at the end, but it's still, if you're going to put the guy, you put him in this little area. It's concave up in these two regions, then concave down in the middle. <laughs> so is it concave down? I think of two to two. And when is it concave up? Well, it's concave up from negative infinity to negative two, and then again from two to infinity. When does it change concavity? Well, that happens at x equals plus or minus two. The thing that's a little bit tricky here is plus and minus. The thing that's a little tricky here is that plus and minus two are not actually values in my function. They're vertical asymptotes. So we'll talk about what an inflection point is, and it's going to be very similar to what you do for critical points. But for this case, it really is not going to be considered an inflection point because they're not points, but they're still the most important part. All right, so the derivative, now this is kind of tricky. You've got to do your quotient rule. So you take low d high minus high d low all over low squared. All right, so from here we got a little bit of work ahead of us to even just get this set up. So this is going to be. 2x squared minus 8x. Here, let me go underneath here. 2x cubed, sorry, minus 8x minus 2x cubed um, minus 2x. Now, the nice thing is the 2x cubes are going to go away, and you're left with negative 10x over your x squared minus 4 squared. So that's our first derivative. And then we still have to do our second derivative. So here, I'm going to move this over. And we'll do our second derivative. So we got to do our low. D high, negative 10, times high, or minus high, so plus 10x, D low. OK, drop down the 2 times the inside, x squared minus 4 to the first power times the derivative of the inside over the low squared. Alright, so that's my fun, fancy second derivative. And I mean, one of the things we can do, oh, the bottom squared, so to the fourth power. So one of the things we can do if we want to simplify this a little bit is you can factor out, cancel out one of the x squared minus fours. So this ends up being at negative 10 times x squared minus 4 plus 20x times the 2x. Because the x squared minus 4 goes away, and x squared minus 4 to the third power. If we keep going with this, we end up with negative 10x squared plus 40 minus, or sorry, plus 40x squared over our denominator, which gives us 30x squared plus 40 over x squared minus 4 cubed. All right, fantastic. Second derivative is a lot of fun. What we want to do is talk about what happens to number 14's answer here. If I plug this in, for the last couple problems, it's had it equal 0. But in this case, if you plug in plus or minus 2, that's where it does not exist. The second derivative does not exist at plus and minus 2. So these point where concavity changes, we've seen that both it happens when the derivative equals 0 or when it doesn't exist. So let's go over the rules. Points of concavity changes are always found when the second derivative is 0 or undefined. Always. These are called points of inflection. Now, the undefined is a little bit tricky to call it a point of inflection because it actually has to be a point. So if it's a vertical asymptote, it may actually change concavity, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a point of inflection. And sometimes you get critical points where you didn't actually get maxes or mins. So if you think about like x cubed, that changes concavity at zero, but the derivative 
So for x cubed, the derivative would be 3x squared. You get a critical value at 0, but you don't get a max or a min. It happens to be a point of inflection. Now, if a graph that changes concavity, but the point is not in the domain, does not have a point of inflection. But here's the big thing. It needs to change concavity no matter what. If it doesn't change, it does not have a point of inflection. So it's just x to the fourth. So when you want to talk about changing concavity, the first thing you want to do is take your second derivative. So y prime is going to be you know, 4x cubed, and then y double prime is going to be 12x squared. Now what you're going to do to this is you're going to set equal to 0, or undefined. That's going to be these points, right? And you're going to get x equal to 0. Now just like when you're doing the first derivative, what you're going to do now is you're going to make a f double prime chart. So label as the second derivative, you're going to put your value on there, and then you're going to plug in points to the left and right and put them into your second derivative. So like negative 1, well that will give me a positive 12. 1, that will give me a positive 12. Just because the second derivative equals 0 does not mean it's a point of inflection. This is concave up from negative infinity to zero, and also concave up from zero to infinity. This is actually concave up through, I believe, even through the zero, as far as it goes. It's concave up everywhere, but at zero, I mean, the second derivative equals zero, so I probably would just do both in both different points. The point I'm trying to make is it does not have a point of inflection because the concavity does not change. Let's do one more point of inflection type of thing, and we'll talk about what you have to actually do to do the problem. So, we'll look at this in the very first one here. To find any points of inflection and find the intervals where the kind of functions kind of came up and down, you got to do the second derivative. So, y prime, 4x cubed minus 12x, y double prime equals 12x squared minus 12. Okay, um, sorry, this would be a squared. Just double check. For 3, then 3, 2, yeah, so 24x. So we've got to figure out where the second derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. Take out a 12x, x minus 2. So you're going to have the second derivative equal to 0 at x equals 0 and 2. So you're going to make a number line, f double prime of x. You're going to put down 0 and 2. And you're going to plug values into the second derivative, not the first derivative. That would be a first derivative chart, not the original function. So you use the original function when you're getting absolute max and min. First derivative when you're looking for increasing, decreasing. Second derivative when you're talking about concavity and points of inflection. So, left of 0, plug in a negative 1, a negative 12, and a negative. Two negatives make a positive. You plug in 1, you get a negative. Plug in 3, you're going to get a positive. So we have points of inflection at 0 and 2 because it changes concavity. I'm not worry about y values at all. And then concave up from negative infinity to 0 and 2 to infinity. Concave down between 0 and 2. And that's it for the most part. And then the other video talks mainly about the second derivative test and how that works.